Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's finals time here at Glanagos. Bambinos are on the circuit. And the starting grid for what will be a very different final, as you will see shortly, is as follows. Harry Chapman and Mason Hibbert go from row number one. Henry Algar and Toby Biggs on row number two. Rex Pooley and Ronnie Kebson on row number three. Row four is Albie J. Stubbs. Philip Petro is on row five, uh, uh, at the end, outside of row four, with Alex Marshall on row number five. John Radcliffe, times they are changing, and so, as Bob Dylan said, but so are the track conditions. Indeed, yeah. Suddenly we went away from the Welsh Highlands and went into the Mongolian forest and had a bit of a downpour, didn't we? Ah, yes. Suddenly absolutely chucking it down just as we cut away to the paddock show. Uh, luckily for all of our cameramen, we were able to hot foot it inside. Uh, but yeah, well, conditions... Well, 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 well just luckily about. For the, luckily for the cameras. We yes, for the cameras. Cameramen, cameras. cameramen yeah, well, dispensable, <laughs> cameras <laughs> indispensable. However, the rain has now stopped. Yes. And look at that. The Bambinos are on wet ties, but it is going to start drying out. Form book has just been thrown out of the window. It's a standing start. We should have nine drivers. Oh, sick. Uh, we've got them. They're not in the correct positions, but never mind. Here we go. Lights out. It's final time at Glanagos. And it's the number 32 of uh, pole sitter Harry Chapman who gets away cleanly and into the race lead. Down Dragon straight we go. You can see the rooster tails being kicked up behind uh, these little bambino carts. As we go up the hill towards Spoon Curve. And uh, it is Chapman still leading up into P2. I think that is that Henry Algar into second place. I'm trying to catch the number. No, I think Henry Algar's dropped down to four. Toby ah. Biggs has gone through into third, I believe. Ah, it's a 77. No, it's, sorry. it's Rex Pooley. It's, sorry, Rex Pooley's up into third. Yeah, and it's not a 17 in second place. It's the 77 of Mason Hibbert. Uh, but it's that very distinctive uh, yellow and black machine of Harry Chapman leading them up towards compression corner for the first time and now they begin the descent now we saw such great action in the first in, in the second heat the final not to say we're not gonna have the same great action but the chances of it being a six car pack in these conditions does get a little bit uh, lessened however look at the way the track is drying out negatives about being on the side of a mountain when it rains my word does it rain positives about being on the side of a mountain it does dry out very quickly Rex Pooley's enjoying it, already up to second then from fifth on the grid. He's had a great first lap of the race, checks over his shoulder, and indeed the 77 of Mason Hibbert has to pull in behind. So Rex Pooley already up into second, but look at Harry Chapman already starting to build a bit of a gap out in front. And you can see the drivers just pulling over to the inside. They're staying on that wet line as they head then into the braking zone into Spoon. And it is still Harry who leads us through this one. What a baptism of fire for the first weekend of Bambinos in 2023. Starting off with a dry race in the pre-final and then moving on to a wet race in the final. There's not much more challenging than that to transition to between only a few hours. But impressively yes. so. And the drivers, I mean, they've all kept it on the black stuff. And that's impressive in and of itself. Indeed it is. Now, all nine of these drivers are new to the British Championship. They are making their Vera Tools Motorsport UK uh, debut this weekend. So we've got no statistics to go on. I hope you enjoyed the uh, videos that we were able to play you after the Paddock Show. And I hope you enjoyed the Paddock Show. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, please keep your comments coming in on the live chat. Now we've got a little bit of rain in the air. Please let us know who you fancy for success in the rain. Uh, now that uh, the track conditions have changed, as Rex Pooley closes in on race leader Harry Chapman. Up the hill, through the spray, up towards uh, Spoon Curve. Well, at the end of the races, Anthony Jordan will be down to ca capture the winner's emotions of the top three. I'm sure there's going to be tears of joy, tears of uh, sorrow uh, up and down the paddock. At the end of this one, it's been a very, very competitive weekend. Uh, John, and it's only going to get more competitive as we draw to a close. Well, you may think there's tears, and they actually just got caught in that earlier down. Uh, yes, it was, <laughs> it was, it was, it was, but, 
just the precipitation. Just yeah, just a just a little bit of precipitation here at uh, Granny Gore. But uh, Rex Pooley, he's loving these conditions already on the back of Harry Chapman, and it is Rex Pooley with the fastest lap of the race, a 107.53. So we're looking at what about eight seconds slower in these wet conditions, of course, on those wet tires than we were in the dry conditions earlier on the dry tires. And Rex Pooley's going to look for the lead, then into the first corner. They're going to be side by side, heading up Dragon Straight, and it's going to be a drag race all the way up to Spoon. Pooley's on the inside, but he has to feed back in once again. I was going to say, now look at how number 77, Mason Hibbert, in third place. Look at how he would have closed in with the two drivers in front of him side by side. He would have got a double slipstream there, two carts breaking the air. That vortex, these, even these slow speeds, the vortex that they would have created would have brought Mason Hibbert right into play. Henry Algar in fourth, Toby Biggs is fifth. They've got a good battle going on. The 17 of Algar, the 66 of Toby Biggs, then it's Albie J. Stubbs in sixth position, followed by Ronnie Kempson in seventh, Alex Marshall is eighth, and Philip Petro is ninth. Yes, indeed. Still some close battling. Looks like Henry Algar's got through on Toby Biggs. Then you were saying that battle was just starting to kick off. And it looks like Henry's managed to get through into fourth place. These top two still following line of CERN. It looked like Rex Pooley could easily get through on Harry Chapman with how quickly he closed the gap. But as you said in the, in the pre-finals earlier, it's one thing closing the gap. It's one thing going for the move. But he is going to go for it this time at the first corner. And he's got more of an over that than last time and takes the lead of the race. Yes, he does. That's uh, probably the first official lead change. Uh, but here on the outside comes Harry Chapman, wheel to wheel. Now, are we gonna, is he gonna brave it round the outside? Going up the hill, side by side, fastest point of the circuit. Wow, they've managed to do it, but it's Pooley on the inside, and he takes the racing line. Hibbert has closed in, so has Algar, so has Biggs, and so has Stubbs. What was I saying earlier about, I'm not sure we're going to see a six-cart train <laughs> in these conditions. Henry, once again, how, prove how, yourself to be a total muppet. How big's the tally now? Uh, oh, I've, I've lost track of fingers <laughs> and toes. We don't have enough between us, I don't think. Uh, a big hello to Gustavo Karanowski from Brazil choosing in. And look at that, Anthony Jordan is getting wet down the pits. Anthony, what have you got for us? Uh, well, Henry, the rain is coming down quite considerably more. Now, the GYG is known for drying out quite quickly here, and I thought we were going to get lucky, but a whole new band of rain has just come in out of nowhere, and it's just started tipping it down once more, so drivers are going to have another challenge on their hands here. Thank you, Anthony. Hopefully you got an umbrella down there. Otherwise, oh. it's going to be getting a little bit moist. No, hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Then look at that. It's coming down in steer rods. The Bambinos don't mind. Three for the lead coming into Spoon Curve. We've still got six minutes to go. Now, of course, they're all on wet tyres. And looking at them, I think that one or two of them might have forgot to put their wetsuits on, which is... Uh, oh, dear. That's not gone well. Hey, at least it's the last race of the day. At them. least the last race <laughs> of the day. And uh, you could drive back. Oh, my word. Uh, absolutely tipping it down as we come up to compression corner. You've got a feel for the Orange Army out on circuit. The marshalling team here at Glanagorse. And you can almost hear it rattling off the commentary box rooftop here at Glanagorse. It's still Pooley, Chapman and Mason Hibbert. They're unaffected by the conditions. It's still nose to tail, neck and neck out of the final corner. With five minutes to go, we start another new lap. This is lap number seven. And Mason Hibbert to the inside, Chapman to the outside, change of lead possibly. Yeah, lovely read there by Mason Hibbert, and then gives the bump, of course, to the driver in first position, that being Rex Pooley, and takes second place as Mason Hibbert. Really nicely done. Harry Chapman just moving out to try and get the outside line and go for an overtake, gets overtaken himself. I did see some people singing in the live chat, I thought it wasn't supposed to rain in Wales, but I think we've already covered that. <laughs> if you're not familiar with Wales, ladies and gentlemen, this is merely a, a light shower. <laughs> this is a light shower, it'll disappear as here we go again. This is the button now for fourth, fifth, and sixth. Uh, Henry Algar in the 17, RBJ Stubbs in the 96, and Toby Biggs in the 66. Now we're back with the race lead. The good news is for the Bambinos is that, of course, they're all on wet tyres, and, of course, the racing lines mean virtually nothing, so they've got all this track to play with, and, my word, they're using every inch of the tarmac available. And now you can see the windmills working overtime in the background. And uh, when it's sunny up here in North Wales, it is absolutely beautiful. When it's raining, it's absolutely brutal. And still pretty beautiful as well, to be fair. If you like that sort of misty <laughs> look, yes. Here we go. 
down the Dragon Straight. Looks like there's oh a... My oh. goodness. The spray coming off the tyres now is insane. Look at Harry Chapman move to the inside there. Thought he could be thinking about the overtake into Spoon, but no, it's covered off there by Mason Hibbert. Hibbert holds on to second place then. Rex Pooley in the lead, followed by Mason and then Harry behind. A little bit of a gap, about three seconds back to that battle you were chatting about earlier. Headed up by Toby Biggs now, but those three also nose to tail as they headed down the hill. Once again, that section of circuit, that is so tough in the rain. I was going to mention it earlier, but I didn't think we were going to get rain today, to be honest. I thought that the uh, Met Office would likely be lying to us, but down into the carousel, that downhill braking zone yep. can really catch you out in the wet. Break two, three centimetres later than maybe you should have. Suddenly the rear's lock, the rear's lock and suddenly you're round and off exactly. into the grass. That's the camber of the track. And you would know this, John, as, as somebody who's driven around here many, many times. On slick tyres. On slick tyres, of course. <laughs> Club, Club 100. 100. Don't let yeah. you out on wet. So, well, John Vigo's as sharp as a tack. He won't, let, he won't spread them any on wet. It's good for cart control, though. Now, we I've got three minutes to go. What I have to say is you're thinking, why aren't they stopping the race? Well, they're on wet tyres. So the carts are built to the conditions, so they're out on the correct tyres. But secondly, look at how wonderfully good the car control is. We haven't seen any spins, any incidents. They're still battling away. This is fantastic driving. New fastest lap. Well, the fastest lap of the race is uh, 107. Uh, 0 0.01 for LBJ Stubbs. Last lap round, Rex Pooley lapping within one tenth of a second of the fastest lap of the race. So that tells you that even though the weather has, cha has changed, the track conditions haven't worsened to the point in terms of they're not getting dangerous, the carts aren't slowing down because they can't get any traction. And of course, to remind you how young these drivers are, I'm so impressed of how as soon as it started raining that bit heavier, Rex Pooley started moving off the line, trying different lines, seeing yeah. where he could find that grip. So impressive for such young if drivers. If you're watching the British Championship at first time, these Bambinos aged six and seven years old. If you've got family, you might, you might have a six-year-old son, daughter, or a niece, or a nephew, or a grandkid, and, you, and they're six and seven, and think, my word, could they, are they capable of doing this in these conditions? This is what makes these drivers so very, very special indeed. Anybody who thinks that go-karting is what you do at a fun fair, they're wrong. This is real sportsmanship, it's real athleticism, and it is real skill. Harry Chapman loves that move into Spoon, doesn't he? Just gets it over to the inside and gets it on the brakes. Chops off the nose of the driver. He did that to Mason Hibbert a couple of laps ago. Thought about it on Rex Pooley that time, but doesn't quite materialise anyway. They head down the hill into the left-hander at the carousel, and it is still Rex Pooley leading us into the final minute of this race. But Harry Chapman is all over him, tries to do the switchback as they head down into compression. Can he get alongside? Not quite, and he's likely going to have to follow... Uh, in line astern once more then as they head through Devil's Elbow. Mason Hibbert is watching this keenly. Don't just think he's sitting there and just thinking, oh, they're having a good battle. He's waiting for an opportunity. He's thinking, where can I possibly take advantage of this battle that's happening right in front of me? What corner is it going to be now? He's making his move. Mason Hibbert for the first time moves from third up into second position through turn number one. They're coming up on Philip Patrol. Then, uh, lapped driver Philip gets out of the way he waves the drivers through very very good heads up driving well done driver number 11 Philip Petro and it's Pooley it's Chapman side by side Hibbert trying to go around the outside are we going to get three wide into Spoon 10 seconds of this race to go almost three wide <laughs> coming through turn four Pick a winner, John, you can't. I definitely can't. This is fantastic. Back to the front goes Harry Chapman. Rex Pooley's practically led this entire race since he got to the front. He hasn't lost it. But in the dying moments of this race, Harry Chapman steals it back. But Rex Pooley is trying to challenge around the outside. It could leave it open then to, to uh, Mason Hibbert trying to get back down the inside as they head through compression. They're still going to go two by two into Devil's Elbow. As we say, that usually doesn't work. And Mason Hibbert is the one that comes out ahead with a little bit of contact from behind from Rex Pooley. Just couldn't quite get it stopped there for the left but all of them facing the right direction. Brilliant stuff. Hibbert now has one lap, 1,100 metres. Oh, and that's Henry Algar out of the race. There's just the joy of karting and the despair of karting. Hibbert's been pushed back to third again as a Pooley back up into P2. Final run down the Dragon Straight, up the hill towards the Spoon. Here we go. Hibbert's actually dropping back a little bit. Here comes Pooley, but Chapman defends the inside. Now down towards the carousel where you've got to be so careful under braking. 
You could see the <laughs> the rain bouncing off the tarmac and jumping back in the air. I think higher than the drivers <laughs> are tall in those yes. carts. Yes, indeed, indeed. <laughs> Insanely so. It is ridiculously wet conditions here at, uh, at Glally Gore. But what a battle it's producing in these incredible conditions. Rex Pooley still trying to make it work down the inside. It's compression. He's trying to force the door open. He's trying to force the door open, but can't quite do it. And it is going to be Harry Chapman who holds on into Devil's Elbow. There may be only one more opportunity into the final quarter. I think we could assume for Rex Pooley. He's all over the back of Harry Chapman's car, but he's not quite able to force that door open. Mason Hibbert's there as well. Mason Hibbert's thinking of going down the inside too, but it is going to be Harry Chapman to hold on to it as they come to the line. It might be a photo finish. It's just going to be Harry Chapman. What a race. Absolutely Ooh. indeed, John Ratcliffe. You have joined us for a great round of the British Championship. Chapman, Pooley and Hibbert separated by three tenths of a second now this is only the first of eight finals we've got but for those of you in the uk last weekend i know we talked talk, last weekend we had the british touring car championship at thruxton and one of the guest classes that weekend was the mini miglias the little mini sevens the old thing and they absolutely stole the show i think our bambinos they're not a guest class they're a regular member of the time but those bambino drivers those nine young drivers of you can see Harry Chapman and you can see the rest of the names on your screen. Potentially, they have just put on an absolute masterclass of driving in the rain. Well done to all those drivers. So, Harry Chapman, Rex Pooley, Mason Hibbert, your top three. Nine seconds down in fourth place is Toby Biggs. Then, Albie J. Stubbs beats Ronnie Kempton across the line for fifth position. Alex Marshall, we saw Alex at lapped in the pre-final, in the, in the second heat rather, in the final, Alex comes home in seventh. Philip Petro finishes one lap down in eighth position. Sadly, Henry Algar failed to finish. Uh, and you can, I'm just looking at the commentary box window through the mist, but again, it's, it's stopped raining again. That's it seems it's to incredible. Be it yeah. does indeed, so maybe we might see some drying conditions, but maybe not for a little while after that. <laughs> Quite well, a downpour. Yeah, and of course, and for those of you watching now, uh, you know, just because that race went ahead, I mean, if the conditions change and get even worse, obviously now the carts get faster and faster, safety becomes more of an issue. We've got five uh, Clark, uh, race directors, Clarks, the course, on circuit. They will judge uh, whether the conditions are safe. Obviously, the carts will be on wet tyres in uh, an event such as this, but Anthony Jordan is undercover, sadly, but he's about to speak to our winners. And Beano's are all done now, and we're down here in, well, Park Fermi, a scrutineering bear. We've got our three drivers here. Harry Chapman, who uh, takes the win on that one by just a small amount. Look at that, 0, zero 8 across the line. You take the win. How's that? Good. Good. How was the rain for you? That looked very tricky to race in. Well, I'm not very used to the rain because... Um, mainly where I live, it's always dry, and the, so I'm on a Simon Wright car, but they're meant for the wet. Yeah, exactly. So you got away with it, didn't you? But uh, yeah, tricky circuit, but uh, a great result. Are you happy? Yeah. Solid. Nice work, mate. Give us one of them. Well done. Well done. P1 out there. Let's go to uh, Rex Pooley, who finishes that one in second place in the number 31. Very, very close race there, mate. Do you want to lift your visor up a little bit? There we go, mate. I know it's slippery out there, but there you go. It's not raining in here. But uh, that was a challenging race. What a, what a drive. It's very good, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone you want to thank? My mum, dad, brother. Tim Rago, who's my engine builder. Um, Terry Fullerton for the chassis and stuff. Well, uh, big thanks to all of them, but uh, I will let you get dry. You can uh, take your helmet off and everything now, but uh, well done on P2. Thank you. Excellent. Let's go to third place just very quickly. Mason Hibbert. Mason, uh, that was uh, a very interesting race, wasn't it? I mean, what can you say about those uh, the rain coming down? That looked like a challenge. It was. Yeah. Well, it's a great way to end it. You come away with a podium. Top three. He gets uh, some nice trophies to take home with you. Are you happy about that? Yeah. Yeah, that's what we like to see, isn't it? Uh, have you raced a lot here at GYG or is this your first time? Second time, I think. No, third. 
Yeah, so uh, found it a bit of a challenge, but like you say, you get to celebrate with your team now, and uh, yeah, you get to uh, go home with a nice, nice trophy. Excellent. Well done, mate. Well done. Congratulations, P3. As you can see, Bambinos slightly lost the words there, but you can uh, excuse them for that one. Only a very young age on that one. As you can see, the rain is coming down once again. The next final is coming up in just a moment's time. Stay with us.